Hello and welcome to the Ask BR on Indran. We got a lot of questions and I'm going to begin with one by Akash Sharavanan who says, "Do you think Indran is a good benchmark for what a science fiction in India should feel like if yes, why?" So, science fiction is a bit of a strange fit for India because we already have this big genre which which kind of encompasses everything and it's called masala, right? Because it people can do anything in that like if you look at one of the standard masala movie tropes which is reincarnation what is it but time travel in a way so we have to be uh, careful with picking stories that have to do with uh, you know with science fiction uh, that really require them to be different but i think low budget science fiction films have a bit of a future like you know without much special effects uh, that may have a little bit of a future because now we are making films like that uh but otherwise you know uh, the benchmark for science fiction is a little hard to say because there are so few of these films you know i'm going to go to the next question by eluna and kind of answer this as well was it too cliche to have a love story in a sci-fi film about robots the film could have just focused on the sci-fi that's the reason we don't have many sci-fi's because the minute you have a big film with a big star you need to bring in a love angle you need song kadal anukal udambil yetane You need all these other things, and you cannot be true to the genre itself. You know, and you have to work around the genre. So the genre works as a framework around the things that we want, uh, an Indian audience wants, like romance, like like villains, and all these kinds of things. So that's what happens, and we are not able to make that that you know a movie yet that's a real benchmark for this. Uh, you know, except for the special effects, which are really good in this film. Uh, Vignesh Chandra Shekhar says, "I wish to know how you look at the idea of a big film. Does it need bigger heart or bigger props? I think both. I think a film can be logistically big, it can be emotionally big, or big in terms of ideas. Like 2001: A Space Odyssey, which is not something that connects with you emotionally. Which is not again, it's okay if a film doesn't connect with you emotionally because not every movie has to make you feel. But yeah, that's a that's a great example of a film with very big ideas. So films can be big in any number of ways." Kabilan says. So the entire movie Endiran was a made of attempt to reach the genre sci-fi I felt it miserably failed um, and how far have we got to go before mo- seeing movies like Inception so I'm going to say what Amir Khan said when he was asked the same question why don't we make movies like Inception uh, he said uh, you know first of all even in Hollywood uh, movies are dumbed down so it's not like every film is like an Inception right but but then Hollywood is far ahead in terms of a technology and b in terms of a global audience so if you put out a story they you can kind of uh, you know you have the ability to the freedom to pick out topics because you're not your audience is not concentrated in one area like like a lot of the indian audiences so what is his thing was mainly we have to be free enough to imagine things which means that our audiences are different and a primary uh responsibility is to uh feed that audience is to kind of reach out to that audience and if that audience does not like certain things then we are restricted in the way we make films or like i said earlier we should really keep the budget low so that we can just you don't need to rely on that entire audience the, he said another thing that's very important he said we don't give enough value to our writers emotionally creatively and economically writers are among the worst paid people in the film industry food chain so you know the minute that changes i think a lot of this will also change vignesh kanan says after watching i i felt shankar sense of storytelling has taken a sharp drop one of the reasons maybe the demise of his frequent collaborator sujatha do you feel the same thing it's a little hard to say because how much of a director is responsible for the screenplay and how much is actually the screenplay writers is a bit of a nebulous area like uh, when asked na maniratnam about the sujatha thing he said what he did was he write he have an idea for a scene he'd be writing it himself but he'd also give it to sujatha and ask him to write a short story around that scene so that uh, when sujatha gave him that little idea of a short story then maniratnam would pick the things that he wanted so that you know uh, so he was as instrumental in taking uh, the scene forward as sujatha was so it's very hard to say how shankar worked to sujatha did he give us our sujatha to give him the whole screenplay and just did the direction part or was he also instrumental in molding the screenplay i don't know but yes a lot of the central conceits the ideas in indran are definitely from sujatha you are really cute you are so i think one of the things about shankar's films where you like you say if if the reason we feel that they begun to look the same is also because 
the themes are kind of familiar even though he gives a different kind of dressing or coating to each films with different kinds of technology and all kinds of things the core of a vigilante seeking justice because something bad happened to him and you're seeing that in a second half flashback that is the standard mode that shankar operates in and that has become a little you know repetitive i think that's more the reason rather than anything else anand b asks considering the screenplay started off as an adaptation of enniya indra has there been any sujatha adaptation that you liked or is there a sujatha novel that you think could make an interesting movie mini series i don't think many sujatha films have been successful uh, for whatever reason you know there has been uh, i can think of movies like priya or karyalam shenvagappu which are very much products of their time they don't really translate well uh but uh, you know the movie that i would like to see made is one it's a very planet of the apes kind of uh, story in which this this person goes out of madras and when and you know they comes back and uh, it was strange city uh, which is submerged and what happens there i forget the name of the story but i remember it very vividly because the descriptions are beautiful and you know like uh, the shock was uh, kind of the shock ending was kind of really nice so i think that would make a great st- uh, movie you know again i don't know how uh, economically feasible it would be but i think it would make a great movie Rohan Lemaye says I wanted to know what your initial opinion when this film came out was and has your opinion on it changed with the sequel so the initial op- uh, opinion was I like parts of it uh, you know I like the 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 brilliant way in which Rajini is acknowledged as a god as an answer to the kadavul irukara question enna padichavar dr vasigal kadavul irukara it addresses both it works both in the screenplay and outside of the screenplay as as a kind of like a bit of you know like a hat tip to the to the rajini uh, cult uh, the who is the chalata sequence is, is one of the great rajini sequences uh, you know the humor the humorous way in which the robots used is just brilliant oh, yeah. and the special effects towards the last like say 20 minutes i mean some people felt they were excessive but i felt yeah it was really you know it was pulling out all the stops it was really working for me and they did it fairly decently also so i really liked it uh, it was like in a you know with all the snakes and all it was like ramana and on steroids kind of thing it was really really fun for me uh but otherwise you know the screenplay was very loose and and all over the place and the characters like the international terrorists and karunas and santanam all of them kind of very weirdly woven in and you know there was really bad dubbing for danny who seemed to be uh, speaking all his lines in hindi and uh, you know and things like the mosquito scene did not work for me though i love the idea you know but the way it was done was kind of you know didn't work for me at all hey happy home salam kar chadi aaj Uh, Prem Gokul asks your opinion on why the Vasigaran scientist character was written though it was necessary that Vasi character had to be underplayed and Chitti have the importance i feel it was underplayed a little too much that Vasi character hardly leaves an impact though technically he is the protagonist so here is the the problem with the Vasi Chitti dynamic right uh, you know one of the uh, major must haves of the masala movie is that there is this protagonist with a strong antagonist so that it's good versus evil right it's like it's like if you take the epics you're talking about the ramayana you have rama on one side ravana on the other side it's good vanquishing evil now you could have literally remade the ramayana in this case let's say around the interval point she t turns evil right perhaps he kidnaps the heroine then like again a, a sita like character development there hey 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 chitti hey hey chitti hilda and then the hero rajni that's vasi he spends the second half trying to find her and vanquish the chitti character so that's a classic hero versus villain story in the masala mold with the interesting twist that this ravana is this rama's own creation so that's one way it could have gone the second is danny is the Ra- is the ravana he rescues chitti from the garbage heap you know that great scene where thing and he recreates him so according to the film's logic of enna padachavarda kadavul you know you have chitti's allegiance uh, he he turns loyal to danny because danny is now the one who has recreated chitti from the scraps 
so he becomes a terminator like weapon that danny uses against vasi and keeps chasing vasi kind of thing and vasi has to find a clever way to kill it this again is a proper masala story but what is what happens is we'll waste a lot of time on the warm fuzzy chitty trying to be cute and lovable and all that and the transformation into evil came very late in the screenplay and it was not done in a way that helped the hero rajini who came off looking really weak so that is the the kind of uh, problem and you know the thing like when when he when he vanquishes the villain with by just tapping the keyboard and things like that it just it feels very small and insignificant compared to the things that uh, chitty has done before that so i think that was my main problem with the film gokul krishna asks do you think shankar is moving towards the commercial phase forgetting about social responsibilities like he had in gentleman and indian ignoring the message he has to deliver what is your answer no i don't believe that i it's a very simple answer i don't believe that we should expect filmmakers to have a social responsibility i'm very against that they should make good cinema that is their only obligation the message can come later or not at all so i don't really care about people giving a message they need to make good cinema first but even here you know you can you know you could have uh, he could have made the robot just do superhuman things and have a lot of fun but there was a bit of a message here about uh, he went deeper and explored the concept of a robot exploring emotions you know like uh, so in a way you're talking about the whole frankenstein kind of thing where the the, the a thing is created and it becomes somewhat human uh, something that was explored in uh, a concept that was explored in blade runner as well where we are talking about things like you know if an electronic uh, thing you know it develops feelings then is it really human or even in uh, you know spielberg's artificial intelligence ai you have those kinds of uh, things which are kind of explored here in a small way so even if you, it's not a message kind of thing you do have ideas that are explored in indran Ramsu Sundarajan says do you think the biblical references were all intentional creating someone in his own image that's one the concept of shame morality etc coming in soon before he's cast out so to speak i can't say if it's intentional i don't know but you also have uh, another biblical uh, thing which is resurrection you know chitty is kind of comes back from the dead so to speak so you have that even though it's not treated the same way but i think uh, you know you can also make a case that some of our mythical constructs are are uh, explored as well because in the end uh, you know when when uh, the chitti uh, you know assumes a sky high kind of uh, uh, proportion you can call it like an equivalent of a vishwarupam uh, kind of concept so yeah i think uh, yeah but that would be an interesting thing to uh, think to ask shankar whether it was like the biblical intention uh, things were intentional or not Nikhil Chaudhary asked do you think Shankar to take a break from big budget uh, extravaganza and do smaller films uh, you know he added unnecessary visual effects even in a simple nanban what do you think uh, so i interviewed him in 2005 and uh, and he said he had two scripts in hand one was a delicate heroine oriented script called Adagiya Kuile okay even the name doesn't sound like a shankar movie right and then on the other hand he had a gentleman which was like a like this big masala movie where the heroine existed simply because she could hold on to the hero and sing some songs so uh, he said no one wanted to produce something sensitive like aragya koile they all asked me to get hold of an action subject so gentleman happened and it became a hit and then he said that cast him in that mold so i asked him will he ever make that aragya koile he said i'm just waiting for the right time because now people expect something else out of me and then he said my films reach out to the masses and the classes to children as well as elders to audiences not only in tamil nadu but also in kerala and andhra pradesh so i'm compelled to make movies that everybody likes maybe if the situation in tamil cinema changes maybe if different kinds of subjects begin to succeed maybe i'll change tracks so this is from 2005 and i think 2018 we've begun to see that different subjects are working so maybe you know someone should remind him of this what he said and uh, you know see if he's going to make different kinds of films Vidya asks there are many questions on Kamal in uh, Rajini's role minus would the movie have more energy had Preeti Zinta the original choice played Sana's role i thought Ash was too plain i don't know because you know all of this requires accent and all kinds of things play a part in this and you know the ability to kind of memorize lines in another language though i guess that's not really that important but whatever it is the role would have been problematic because it is a the problem is not so much the actress as the conception of the role you know shankar's heroines have always been a bit problematic because you know they he he has they've always had to do these weird 
scenes like in kadalan there is this scene with the virginity test uh, in mudal one you know manisha sees uh, farmers offering grain to arjun and then she has nothing so she removes her you know that that mundane pallu and says uh, that is all she all she has is her manam and she's offering it to him i don't know it's a very weird scene scenes these are and the creepiest scene in endran was when you know aishwarya tries to incite rajnikanth by by kind of uh, you know trying to make out or pretending to make out with the drunk uh, kalabhavan mani that's a really really sad scene so uh, you know th- so that's what happens so i i kind of agree with this next comment when it says despite his high budget and technical wizardry shankar has always undermined the female protagonist in his films and uses similar tropes like dignity time and again i found the scene where the robo saves a naked girl and who is in turn hurled hurt, hurled in front of a moving vehicle totally unnecessary yeah so that's i think the writing is more to do with it than the heroine herself uh arjun dev is asking aishwarya rai cheats in med school using chitti's help how many people do you think she has killed there by medical malpractice during uh, be- between endran and 2.0 that's that's funny but in theory i like the idea of a less than goody goody heroine you know i like the idea a lot sandegamella ivara mental la கூட்டிட்டு to say things about the hero and the events around him and it's difficult to similarly characterize the hero into given the time constraint so that's what he said then but now that we've seen movies like aram and aruvi succeeding i don't know if he thinks differently uh, it's you know we'll just have to wait and see uh, vikas atkan says what is your opinion about the over the top action sequences and acting especially in south indian films i love it what's not to love you know we need all kinds of films and all kinds of stories to be told in different kinds of pitches and the over the top like you call it that's the masala mode and i and i'm glad that it's thriving in tamil and telugu cinema of course the problem is that people don't make as many good masala movies as we like but that, that's not the problem with the with the mode itself that's more a problem with the people who who write and direct these films so i but but i would say more more of it i mean i'd say we need more of it anand b says what do you think why do you think tamil movies still persist with the same person being writer director this movie clearly needed some genre savvy writing which shankar is not would ayirathil urvan have made a better movie if shankar had only directed it based of selvaragavan script i think that's a mouth watering concept for to have selvaragavan write a movie with a grand scale and scope that shankar can direct i you know i think that would be really great uh, but because selvaragavan is a director himself you know it's never going to happen but you know it's a mouth watering idea anand b says hypothetical what if had the movie been made in the original timeline that is with kamala hassan and preeti zinta in the in the uh, i think it was in the 90s would it have been a more cerebral complex sci-fi uh, kamala hassan and sujatha involved in the writing shankar of the 90s directing instead we got mosquito mode chitti i think a good good example to see would be indian right because which also had a very similar weak hero in the sense of morally weak hero and he didn't have the villain was a stronger and more memorable character that the villain was the morally right indian tata but i'm saying in terms of the stories morality that you know the hero was kind of uh, there was a weak hero and a very strong villain that's what i'm trying to say and the villain kills the hero that is possible in a kamal movie that is not possible in a rajni film where the lines between good and evil are more strongly drawn and uh, you know the the i think that's that that kind of subversion uh, i don't think can happen because rajnikanth's image uh, and the audiences also won't allow for it but yeah that would have been a very different uh, to uh, robo and i think that would have been a little more interesting to watch chini says this was one movie that broke several rajni hero rajni hero types no fancy introduction no punch dialogues no major fights did shankar have to create a second rajni to compensate for his lack of superstarness in the protagonist now chitti is a protagonist is fascinating right because you know you look at it he's also kind of a protagonist one who evolves through three stages the first stage is he's the kamal and swati mutyam kind of innocent who does not know uh, right from wrong and then uh, the second being the rajini and annamalai padayappa kind of hero 
who is backstabbed by his own best friend so to speak and the third is the amir khan and rangde basanti kind of mode where he goes down fighting the establishment that is denying him his basic human rights so there are all these kinds of shades to the chitti character it's fantastic that such a you know tragic dimension exists within the constructs of rajni scene right what's so fantastic is not so fantastic is the development of this character so even though you have a lot of the uh the fant- uh, you know it needed uh, the 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 chitti character was very fascinating in many ways because the the lack of superstarness in vasi uh, was the real problem in this film uh there are a lot of people prakash asked there are a lot of people who say indiran is a shankar film and not a rajnikanth film for obvious reasons but in a way it also shows that the superstar surrenders himself to the role and for the best of a movie so why is it seen as a low point and not a plus see i don't think uh, this is actually a problem because i mean how the movie ends up is a different thing but rajnikanth's process is he takes a very long time trying to decide what his next film is so he keeps meeting a lot of filmmakers you know and reading a lot of scripts trying to get them to so he i think what he does is he his involvement with the screenplay and the filmmaker is at the stage of deciding whether to do this film or not then once he decides that this is going to be the movie i think that's where the word that you use surrender comes in so then he says okay now boss i'm just going to be the actor on the sets and you direct the movie i think that's what happens so i do think that there is some kind of quality control that's happens here and i do this you know i don't think it's completely you know he does things that to any director and he just goes and says okay i'll do anything that you want me to do i think he first decides what he wants to do and then says okay now you tell me what what you want me to do so i think there is still that that thing there finally prasanna kumar asks even now rajni excels on negative shades compared to the hero role for instance the bad chitti and motta boss kind of thing we lost a good villain when he became the eternal good guy your take uh, i would say that over the years you know when you look at uh, uh the, the the roles that rajnikanth does i think he lost his edge on screen simply because of the characters that he had to keep playing again and again because even today when you look at a netric kanna or an avargal there is such electricity whenever he's on screen you know there's this fantastic screen presence and gradually that you know as the softening happened on screen he that edge became a little dull um i remember this review of uh, of shiva you know that that film that came out in the 90s uh, with the uh, uh anand vigadan had said something to this effect i don't remember the exact words but rajini engira singathai indha maadhiri oru kootukulla evlo naal potu veppanga that kind of thing and um, uh, that that is really what happened to him they kind of caged his personality and that's what happened over and over again so uh, is is did we lose a, so even when you look at indiran you know uh, i uh, one of the things that's most fascinating to me is not what happens on screen but how in a way a movie can be read at a at a sub level you know like a meta level which is that uh, you know when when there's an actor uh, should he go the 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 vasi way and play ordinary people or should he go the chitti way and play superhuman people <laughs> that crossroads kind of thing you know is is interesting in in rajnikanth though that's that's a summing up of the rajnikanth story that that you know the that at the end people remember chitti more than rajni so it's the superstar that always trumps the actor and that's uh, rajni and that's endran so thank you for tuning in i hope you liked this episode of ask br we'll be back with another movie next week uh, till then keep watching film companion south